Hey everyone, Darcy from Tesla Astronaut. I'm going to do a quick run through of Autopilot today, the basic features, how to get it set up, and what to look out for while you're using it. Again, I'm doing a voiceover because the initial voice recording while I was driving was not fantastic. So before you start using Autopilot, I recommend that you set up Autopilot first. You do that by clicking on the vehicle icon. Um, the bottom right of the screen, clicking on autopilot, and that should pull up this screen. Now, auto steer beta basically means that the vehicle would steer itself in the lane. Uh, if the lane bends, it will follow the lane as it bends. Uh, now, for full self driving visualization, this one is uh, just showing you what the vehicle is seeing in real time. Uh, if there are stop, stop signs, they will show stop signs. If there's a traffic light, they will show traffic lights. The next one is to set your speed. Um, do you want your speed to be at the speed limit of the road or would you like autopilot to set the speed at whatever speed that you're currently driving? So I have mine set on current speed. I feel that's safer, mainly because I don't want the vehicle changing speed for no apparent reason. Like if it detects that the speed limit of this particular road is 40 kilometers per hour and, and I'm driving at 60 kilometers per hour, I don't want um, AP to set my speed limit down immediately, nor do I want it to increase the speed in the event that I'm driving slower than the speed limit. The next few ones are mainly safety features. So speed limit warnings, the speed limit, forward collision warning, lane departure avoidance. Uh, for me, I like my speed limit to be displayed. I don't want it to be chiming. It's very annoying. Then for speed limit, I have my set to a variance. Mainly what this means is your vehicle, if you set your max speed at 75, it's okay to go up um, to 76 or 77. This is good when you have a downslope on an uphill and you don't want your vehicle accelerating or braking just to maintain speed uh, for no apparent reason. For forward collision warning, what this does is if you're too close to the vehicle, AP would chime and tell you that you're too close to the vehicle. For me, I've set this to late mainly because I can see what's in front of me <laughs> and I don't like it when AP chimes too often. So that's just my preference. Uh, please select what you prefer. For lane departure assistance, this one is interesting. If you were to steer away from a lane, AP has the capability to steer you back into the lane. So that is under the assist function. Now should you set it to warning, the same one like what I do, AP would chime and beep should you steer away from your lane. So for those of you who, um, if you fall asleep quite often at the wheel or, or you doze off quite fast, uh, perhaps it's good to set your AP to assist. I think that's better for you. In fact, if you're tired, please, please just take a break. Those are the main few features that you want to be customizing. After that, if you scroll down the screen, I don't think you should, start, you should touch the rest of the features. Those are all safety features. Remember, the car has about eight cameras around it. It's all seeing all the time. Leave it on. You're, prob you're probably safer with it. Turn on. Now, as you merge on the, onto the highway, make sure you do not engage autopilot immediately. Um, put on your signals. Go to the lane that you want to stay in for most of your drive. And then once you're in your lane, then you can consider going, going ahead to activate AP. This is the best time. Now the red circle represents the speed limit. The one on the right hand side, that shows you your cruise control speed, the speed limit of which AP will be set at. Of course, the most right is your speed limit. And if AP is available, you will see the steering wheel icon appear on the screen. Now to engage autopilot or cruise control, you do it via your gear lever. To engage cruise control, and this is just to maintain speed, you pull the gear lever down once. Now, when cruise control is activated, you will see a blue circle icon around the cruise control speed that you want. Now, to activate AP, what you have to do is to pull down the gear lever twice. Now, once you pull it down twice, you see two lane lines appear, the lane that you're in, and also the steering wheel icon has now turned blue. Now, this means that AP uh, has been activated and the car is driving itself. 
Now, while the car is driving itself, you have to take note that you still have to pay attention to the road. Uh, please don't take out your mobile phone and start using it. Now, the next thing to learn is how to disengage autopilot. To disengage autopilot, you can do two things. Number one, you can step on the brakes. Or you could tap your gear lever upwards just once. Now, when you tap your gear lever up just once, AP is disengaged, you will see the blue lane lines disappear, the blue steering icon disappear, the blue cruise control disappear. To set the speed limit of autopilot, it's quite simple. You see the wheels, the scroll wheels on your steering wheel. You can scroll up or scroll down on the right hand side, all right, the right scroll wheel. I'm sorry that you can't see the, sc the scroll wheel or the, the gear lever right now. Uh, that's because I didn't film this in wide angle lens. I really apologize for this. But yes, just scroll the wheel up or scroll the wheel down. Again, it's the right scroll wheel. There's another method to adjust the speed limit for AP. Uh, step down on your accelerator pedal. Once you're past the current speed limit that you've set, you can pull the gear stock down just once and that will set the new speed limit. So once you have AP on, the drive is quite relaxing. Uh, this does not mean that you should not pay attention to the road. Please always have both your hands on the steering wheel. Um, there will be a slight difference in pressure on the steering. So from time to time, all you have to do is to nudge the steering wheel just ever so gently so that AP knows that you're still paying attention to the road. Now in the very unfortunate event that you got distracted by your phone, you don't have your hands on the steering wheel, you perhaps saw a good looking guy or girl that just drove past and took both your hands off the wheel for whatever reason, AP will try to get your attention back. Now, if your hands are off the wheel for too long, AP would prompt you on the screen and then it will flash the screen blue. Now this is when they're trying to tell you to take over the wheel. You have to nudge the wheel ever so lightly and AP will continue. We're more or less done with the basics of AP. Uh, this portion I'll just talk about the quirks and perhaps some tips and tricks when you're using AP. Now AP always likes to stay in the center of the lane. It does not lean right, nor does it lean left. So in a case where the motorbike that just rode past, usually as a normal driver, you may lean a bit more to the left to give the bike some space to ride. Take note that AP will not do this. In the event that a vehicle should straddle another lane, AP will definitely hit the brakes. Well, that is fine. Most human drivers will not expect you to slow down if a vehicle were to lean to the right of the lane. Uh, most of us will just keep to the right or keep to the left, and we'll still pass the vehicle as per normal. So when AP does hit the brakes, the driver behind you usually will never expect you to do that. And that poses a bit of a danger uh, if the driver should not be paying attention to the road. AP always likes to stick to the center of the lane. Uh, this is something where I feel it's by design. There's nothing wrong with it. Just that when you have smaller lanes, uh, and then you have a mix of big and small vehicles on the road. At times, you really do have to lean more to the corners of the lane. And that's something which perhaps in future AP can be adjusted for. The next thing you need to take note of is AP slows down a bit later than usual. Also, when it takes a bend, it doesn't anticipate the turn like a human would. For us, we would anticipate the turn and then lean into the lane a little bit earlier so that we don't have to turn too hard or, too, or make a too tight of a turn while we are turning. So if you look at this band over here, uh, there's a few things that you have to take note of. 
So number one is the speed limit. Uh, we, as a driver, we know that the vehicle cannot uh, take a sharp bend at this speed. So sometimes AP may not um, slow down in advance because you have set the speed limit at a certain speed. So you have to do this for AP uh, ahead, ahead of time so that it can take the bend. Now I recommend putting the speed limit slightly slower if you want AP to take the bend. Of course, for such sections, I would recommend that you drive this manually. AP can take the bend at a slower speed. Uh, so if you're watching here, AP is keeping a perfect center line. Uh, this is not human driving behavior. Uh, most of us would be leaning left into the lane. And again, merging traffic or merging lanes, AP cannot do it. You have to take over. Uh, you have to anticipate what AP would do because uh, there are limitations for AP. This is not FSD. So I have covered most of the basic features of AP. The most important thing to take note is while using AP, please always just make sure that you are driving, you are paying attention to the road. Um, anything else is a bonus. AP definitely makes driving safer and more relaxing, but that does not mean that you can fall asleep behind the wheel. Again, I really hope that autonomous driving can come sooner rather than later. So if you like the videos, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys, have a good one.